Uh, okay, hello, I'm Danny. Um, I'm talking here in this tonight. So I just recorded this whole video and realized I'd recorded it wrong, but I did it in like 50 minutes. Nobody wants to hear me talk for 50 minutes. So it was actually quite good because now it means I'm going to absolutely fly through this presentation. So I'm going to go back to the start. So this presentation from Big D to BBC in eight years of mild pain. This is the story of my journey from air TV contributor to industry professional. So the journey, which a lot of you have heard before because I did this exact same talk this time last year, but if anyone wasn't here, I'll recap quickly. So I was an air TV contributor in 2014. I made like 12 films, including this one down here, Time Vagabonds. Um, I was 20 when I started and now I'm turning 30. Did the same joke last time. Um, after I graduated, I and four others, we were commissioned by BBC Scotland. We turned our dissertation, The Bad Guy, into a short film for broadcasts on TV. From this, events led to me becoming a contributor at BBC The Social. Don't know if you'll have heard of it. Um, at least one of the other talkers here today has been heavily involved. But every time I talk to somebody young and new, if they've seen The Social, they say no. And that's quite concerning because The Social is specifically for young people. Um, I made like 20 videos as a contributor, but the interesting thing is that all of these videos were based heavily on a character I created while at Air TV called Big D. My hard work as a contributor led to me becoming a full-time researcher at The Social, where I filmed and edited even more videos. I filmed so many videos and edited so many that I've started to lose count. I think I must have done about film 50, edited over 100. But I've been working there for around two years on and off, which is dependent on contracts, but sometimes that's just how the industry works. So, interesting stuff. What do I do as a researcher? Hopefully this pie chart illustrates it perfectly. Um, as a researcher, I edit videos, I caption videos, I make thumbnails, I film videos, and I do some research. As you could tell, editing, thumbnails, and captioning is the majority of my work. Filming is this nice little slice here, and research, for researcher is this tiny thin red slice here. Um, that's kind of like a joke, uh, but I, I do actually do a fair bit of research as a researcher, but it's mostly the other stuff. Research can be things like sourcing props, finding locations for filming, finding contributors, or watching and researching trending content. Um, I just add this in because a researcher is one of these jobs that can change from place to place. So some Researcher jobs in television especially can be research heavy or some can be like technically heavy like this one. So there's a researcher isn't just all about research, it's kind of a, a multi-purpose role um, and it changes place to place. Uh, and I even want to include that I include Air TV in my research when I'm looking for new contributors or researching content. To prove it, I seen Air TV member at BBC Scotland and PQ last week around 5:30 p.m. It was on a Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, if that was you, I, I mean, I, I, I won't, I won't reveal who you are, but you know who you are, and I recognise you from watching Air TV videos. Hopefully, um, you weren't there in some sort of secret purpose or anything like that, and I've like given your whole thing away. Um, but why is my chat important to you? I don't want to try and sound intimidating or pessimistic about the world of professional work. I want to do the opposite. I want to show you that my work as a researcher, BBC Scotland, is not too far off what you might do every day at your TV. Now I hope this, uh, you're not going to see this at all. Uh, this is going to be very difficult for you to see. Um, but this is a timeline in Premiere Pro. Look how nice and organised it is. But everyone's timeline in Premiere Pro looks very different. This is from a solo series I did called Walking with Witches, but how different does this actually look to your own Premiere Pro timeline when editing? I'm hoping it looks very similar to prove my point. Um, <laughs> so, two videos I've edited, filmed and edited. I don't know why I've done that. E two videos I've edited slash, oh, oh, I don't know why. Right, so I've sent this presentation, um, I can get them up on the screen. I've sent this to whoever organised the event, and they're going to pause the video right now, and they're going to play these two videos. Alright, I hope you've seen those two videos. If you just skipped it, uh, it doesn't matter. Um, go back and watch them. Uh, and I want your honest, truthful opinion. Don't try and be modest. But do you think you could have filmed or edited these videos? 
because I'm absolutely certain that you could, because these were piss easy. <laughs> uh, the Guide to Outdoors was broadcast on live TV, and it sucked. I'm pretty sure anybody in their TV could make this video again and make it better. If you cringe while watching it, don't worry, that's the point. I, I want you to cringe at how bad that was. Scottish Cup goal, so that was quite a good video. That was also broadcast on live TV. So these are two videos that are broadcast on live TV that took me no time at all. Um, and I'm certain that you could have edited them. Thumbnails, uh, this one's not too important. Look at these thumbnails, I made these thumbnails. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can make them as well, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Advice I can pass on for editing. Uh, keep your timeline as tidy as possible. You know that phrase, a tidy room is a tidy mind? Well that applies to editing. A tidy timeline is a tidy mind. Try and use the keyboard rather than your mouse whenever you can. Drag and drop while user friendly causes lots and lots of problems. Try and use the in and out and insert and overwrite whenever you can. Remember in Premiere or Resolve or whatever Eden, there's a shortcut for absolutely everything. So practice as often as you can. Just keep practicing, practicing, learning and learning. The more videos you edit, the better you'll be. It's better to get a head start now than to graduate and not have edited anything and then realize you've got to edit loads of videos and you don't know what you're doing. Um, my most important one as a social media researcher would be learn how to caption. This is essential. Every company out there, they create their own social media content these days. And editing is a skill that will serve you well in any occupation, not just filmmaking. So say you worked in a bar and they started making their own TikTok videos. If you know how to edit, then they're going to ask you to do it. You could work anywhere if you know how to edit and they're doing these things. It's going to help you out, not just if you want to work in film or TV. So if you, as I said, if you practice editing for social media now, you're learning a skill that's going to help you so much in your professional careers. Captioning is so, so, so important. Even when it does it automatically, it's a thing that you've got to learn an eye for. It took me two years to get good at captioning. Advice I can pass on for filming. I hope this doesn't sound um, condescending, but I didn't know anything about filming, or I thought I knew everything, turned out I knew nothing. When I tried to become a professional, I realised how little I actually know. So... Remember the limitations of your equipment. This is so important. Um, I know in ATV, you probably use the same cameras that I used when I was there. And I, and I thought it was old at the time. Um, don't try and overdo what you can't do with such limited equipment. Um, try and use the limitations to your advantage. Try and, I would say, scale it back rather than scale it up. Um, autofocus is good and helpful. I spent a lot of time thinking autofocus was bad when really if I had just used it, it would save me a lot of time and stress. Use natural light as often as you can. Natural light always looks good. Whereas if you don't know how to use lights, which I didn't know, it's going to look awful. If you get lighting wrong, it looks awful. It's much harder to get it wrong with natural light. I always just think as low an ISO as possible was good, but while it is good, it's not necessarily... 100% true because you can go all the way up to 800 ISO pretty much on any camera and you're good uh, and if there's any industry professionals out there that, that want to disagree with me feel free um, because I could still be wrong but this is what I do when I'm using the BBC Scotland cameras shutter speed should always be at 50 this was a thing I did not know until I was one year in my professional career at BBC The Social I just thought you could set the shutter speed whatever, but the guy got me in trouble, um, and now I always set it at 50. Uh, if you're able to control these two, these give you so much more light, your ISO way up, and your shutter speed way down. It gives you so much more light, allows you to control your image so much more. You can control it through the f-stop or ND filters, rather than changing the shutter speed, which you're not meant to do, in ISO, which, you know, it doesn't, doesn't really matter too much. Um, I'd, and I, I, and I know that's very shorthand of me, but I'm just trying to go through as fast as possible. Remember, white balance. If you've got a video too blue, you can't turn it white. If you've got it too orange, you can't turn it white. If you have it relatively in the middle, you can adjust it a little bit, but you got to get it right or you can't fix it. Practice on every single camera you can get your hands on. Because once you know the fundamentals, every single camera is the exact same. Pretty much all the fundamentals in every camera is the same. Finale. The professional world, I hope, is as difficult or scary as it might seem. I know I'm talking very fast, I hope all this information is going in. 
Know how to edit for social media is so, 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 so important. I remember when I was here last year, I said all a task to make at least one bit of social media content, and I don't think I've seen it. Director's interviews for Atvas would be a good format for it. Honestly, you have all the stuff here. I want to see one bit of social media content. It'll raise, if you know how to do this, it'll raise the profile of AirTV exponentially. That's how AirTV grows, social media content. Practice editing and camera work as often as you can. The more practice you do, the better you'll get. And the better you are when you start, the more likely you are to progress. Research trending or similar content when you're making your features content or even your drama content. Look what videos you like, which videos do well, why do they do well, what techniques do they use, what formats do they use, what, eh, what do they do that makes a video good and you try and do it and I'm sure your video will be much better. It's not stealing, it's inspiration. Um, and remember that editing and camera essentials are essential for a reason. I say that very respectfully. Don't be like me in AirTV when I thought I didn't need to learn these essentials because I did. I did not know anything and when I went out into the professional world, I learned this very, very quickly. And I hope that... Um, I hope nothing I said is contradictory because I'm starting to feel like it was. But if you've got any questions, I'm not sure anybody will email me, but my email address is here. Um, and also, I made a Time Vagabond zine. I wish I was here. I would have sold them to everyone for half price. You could have had a zine or zine. If you want one, you can email me. I'll send them to you. I wish I was here for the Q&A. If you've got any questions, uh, I'll answer them. Right. Have a good day.